Welcome along, guys, and welcome back to the Japanese garden. We have Gregoire with us. Hello. If you cast your minds back to last month, we put a video out fitting the uh, Spark system. We lost the swearing. Bike. We lost Lots the swearing. swearing. <laughs> and I've got something for you, Greg. <laughs> by, by, by the way, I know you were short. I know you were short of funnels, but uh, <laughs> no, no present. No present. Thank you very much. But uh, after we, we finally got the exhaust fitted, so then we needed mapping. So we went up to MS. S performance in Colchester for a full mapping session of the bike. Yep. Took the cameras with us, thought we'd do a little bit of a, it's a bit of a technical video talking yeah. through the process. Could be a little bit boring, mapping, maybe, maybe a little yeah, bit boring in parts. It's, it's but... a bit of a techie one, but if you're interested in the sort of process of mapping a motorcycle, yeah. how that sort of works out, we thought we'd take the cameras along. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of tea, make yourself comfortable, and chop seat, roll the intro. So today, what we want to do is we're fitting a full system to Greg's bike. Got the old dustbin on the back. This is what we're fitting. It's the Evo 19 Spark system. And if it does all go to shit, we've got <laughs> enough firewood here to just burn it. It's not heavy, but it is disgusting. <laughs> a butt plug, get anything like that. Greg, what have you got? Yeah. No, it's got a bit stiff now. Hang on, that's exciting. <laughs> to be honest, we're, we're almost done. Well, you never going to find, but hopefully we're almost done. Today we're at MSS Performance where we're going to get the bike dynoed. Uh, we've got all the exhaust fitted. I took you, I talked you through a bit of the exhaust and the fitment. We had a bit of an issue because we ordered the, the race system, which is meant to go under race fairing. So we've had a bit of a mare since the last video, but I talked you all through how we overcame it and what we did. But today it's all about the mapping. Greg is just signing his life away. <laughs> if the bike blows up, it's not their fault. <laughs> Standard T's and C's with a dyno. And uh, yeah, we're going to run it through some sessions. We're going to see what the fuel in's like. We're going to see, um, you know, basically how much power it makes, obviously. But more, it's a case of the reason we're doing this. Greg wants to get a better throttle response with the system, obviously, make sure the fuel in's right. And any top end power it makes are just a bonus. But it's more about response, rideability is what's important. So uh, there she is. We'll talk you through a bit about the bike in a second. Exciting, Greg. Hey, this is it. What Very the moment we waited for. Yes, it'll be good. So we've got the full spark system. And what we're going to be doing today is obviously a map, and I think it's Woolage you guys use, isn't it? The That's Woolage right, software yeah. um, to, uh, to, to flash it, basically. What we've also done, Paul, is we've disconnected the Lambda. Yep. So the Lambda's off. Um, we've disconnected the servo motor. Yep. That's gone. And that's all the things we've taken off, per se, isn't it? Yeah. So I guess that's things you can disable with the Woolage software, yeah, isn't it? Really the warnings yeah. and those. So pair valve blocked. We don't have the lead to flash the ECU on the bike, so we're just going to have to take the ECU out and do it on the bench. No problem, that's what I've done before. Um, but yeah, she's, I think we're ready to go now. Once we get, we're going to do a base run now. We've got the, uh, the cabling connected to the diagnostic plug, and that will give, you know, through here, and that will give readings of throttle position and all that onto the screen when the Windows update is finished. This is your worst nightmare, isn't it? Two people with fussy buggers with cameras in your face while you're trying to work. So the, the Woolage software is just basically an interface sits between the ECU. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. so, so instead rather of than having the raw data from the ECU, you've got an interface there which, yeah. which you makes yeah. it easy I'll, to I'll, manipulate. I've seen the raw data of the ECU yeah. and it's, you would, it's, it's, yeah, uh, it's a lot, a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. And you can also do diagnostic, auto tune. You can also lock the maps. So if we did build you a map, you can lock it so no one else can read it, stuff oh, like yeah, that again. Okay. Uh, things so, like the Lambda sensor warning and all that, how do you disable all of that? So that's all in advance, so yeah. it's all here. So you just tick these boxes and what it turns. All it's doing is turning the fault codes off, it's not disabling. It's the, not doing anything, it's just stopping it. Yeah. So stopping it although it up. says disable pair valve, you're, yeah. not, you're not switching the pair valve function off, you're switching the, the fault. Warning lights, so yeah. if you unplug it, yeah. and yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. all you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It is, very good. Cool. So what's the next step? Just, I guess, flash the Next step, there. well, or do a base what, run first. What I, I do a base one, but what I normally do is I'll disable the O2 sensors because yours is unplugged anyway. Yeah, disable so the yeah. fault codes, yeah, and then we'll flash it. Yeah. Make sure it's working okay. Put it back on as a standard one. Is do it just the O2 sensor, that's all? Oh, no, and the servo in it. Servo oh, eliminator. Which, the servo? Oh, so, yeah, the, the exhaust servo. So motor. disable the exhaust valve. And the, yeah. So that is that the process started, is it? Is that? It's starting, is it? They, they vary in how long they take to finish yeah some are 10 minutes some What's are right to it yeah some are a few minutes there we go we've completed that's the uh, base map flashed onto uh, the ecu
power curve. Yep. And there's your air fuel mixture as it runs up okay. the power curve. Something down every place at the moment, isn't it? So always a bit lean, always a bit funky at the beginning. Yeah. When you open the throttle quite wide at low, at a hundred percent throttle at low RPM. Yeah. But as you can see, it goes. Ooh, quite lean there, quite rich. Quite so the, the dotted line is the ideal AFR yeah. line, isn't it? So you're, you're yeah. 13.2. So above it is lean, below it is rich. Below it is rich. So yeah. it's quite rich at the top end then, isn't mm. it? With a bit of wind in it, it's probably get, get a club, but we could get that better, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but so it's we'll, surprising. Normally you think with the pod it might be a bit leaner though, if you change to a full it's system. It's generally really? leaner at the, the bottom. It's really leaner at the bottom yeah, when you go I think, uh, yeah. okay. Most of the other stuff. So if you were to run that, that's safe though, isn't it? That, is it, yeah, is it, yeah. that wouldn't damage yeah. the bike running it just by changing the pipe without getting it mapped. Mm, it, no. it would, wouldn't no. be a... But bear in mind we've got the dash blank the top, which will make it a bit leaner anyway. Oh, but yeah. Okay. But yeah right, so we'll 170 see. at the back wheel that was then? 170, 172, 171, yeah, so 171, 170, average. 170. We've got quite a good base of, a, of GSXR, the same ECU number with a oh, full system. You? Oh, okay, yeah. So it's a good starting point. So what we we'll do is, so we'll just load it into the ECU. We'll load it straight into the ECU. Yeah. I've changed a few little things that you wanted in there. Um, Tweak it and so I don't know if you can see that there. Look. So that's the ignition. Okay. So red means we've taken the ignition out of it. So that's 20 degrees of ignition out of this area, which okay. is sort of mid-range, low throttle openings, which does make them quite snatchy. Right. They put loads. I believe they put loads in for emissions. So right, yeah, yeah. That's so you, a huge. That, that's the point of it, isn't it? You're fighting yeah. the emissions, aren't you? You're removing yeah, the, yeah. the emission stuff to yeah. give you better response. So there's a different fuel map in there, and it's basically the same sort of settings that we've put in anyway. Yeah. So okay. we can well, fire that into that, it. That's and a good base brilliant. point, then, isn't it? Saves a lot of work, doesn't it? It could do. It could send us in the wrong direction. But looking, you, you can sort of see where it's rich and lean here yeah. and look at where the fuels, they've richened it and leaned it. And it's very similar. Yeah, so, yeah, right, so yeah. looking at the, t yeah, I see what you're saying. It's all, yeah, it's up and down over the place at the moment, isn't it? But you'll never get, I mean, you're never going to get a billiard smooth line. No. It's very rare. Um, you'll always have a few little peaks, but if you can get it closer to the line, yeah. then yeah, that's yeah. what we want. It's a little bit lean all round at the start. It's a, it's a, there's a, that's, that's really lean there, we've got to get rid of that. And this part, yeah, it's just a bit just too lean. The, so ideally, where that's above the line, we want that, that below, the, below line, the line. Yeah. Yeah. So we can try and iron some of that out. Okay. So it's better to be slightly rich then, I guess. Yeah, I so say once yeah. you put fresh air in it, there'll be more air. Yeah, so, so, so it's slightly rich, it brings it about yeah. right then, yeah, so with the air. In theory. So I've done two runs now. Now we're just going to... Uh, Make some changes, a bit lean in the middle still. Uh, a bit lean all over now, so we're just going to put a bit more fuel in it. Certainly more fuel, about seven grand. It's quite lean at seven grand. And uh, do another one and see where we are. So adjusting those fuel tables manually by adding extra percentage of fuel. So the base map we've put in not far off, whereas like your map was like this, wasn't it? So, yeah. oh, right, so that's, that's there's the less to way. adjust, so it makes it a little bit quicker. So that's 76. 76 is across, yeah, as an average. So 76 well, is the throttle position, and yeah. 6 is the 6 run we've done. Gotcha. Right, okay. Yeah. So it's, that's throttle, okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's better than it was all over the place initially, wasn't yeah. it? So it's already so, yeah, we're in getting, the right direction. So that's like a good base point. Yeah. So the changes that you just made, then, are you going to 
write that to the So we'll do, I'll, do all, I'll go through every map now, change the fuel in, and then write then the ECU. We'll save it, obviously. And then so if yeah. anything goes wrong, we've still got it. Yeah. And then, yeah, write the ECU, and then we'll run. And it's like I said to you, I'll run a, probably a few of them, a few different areas, and if they're good, then I know the changes I've done to the others have worked as well, because it's the same fuel you're putting in the same yeah. areas, yeah. generally. Yeah. Do you want to, we've got time for to grab something to eat while you do your changes Yes, mate, here, go then, for yeah? it. You go okay. for it. Brilliant. Should we do that then? Yes, do Sandwich time. All right, we're going to get a quick bit of lunch while Paul does okay, the uh, changes to the map. Ooh, uh... So we had some issues fitting the exhaust, which I mentioned at the beginning. Now, this was no fault of MSI Performance. This was a fault of the person who purchased the system, which is probably <laughs> me because I recommended which one. For Sam to get for Christmas. The so joint, joint mistake. Joint, joint mistake. mistake. We, we ordered the race system which fits under race fairings. Now, Greg's bike's a road bike, it doesn't have race fairings. So we had a bit of a nightmare, didn't we? We did. Actually trying to fit. After that video closed where I said, I think we're all done we're now. Done. There'd been a lot, of, uh, a lot of shenanigans. A lot of shenanigans. And it wasn't just a fairing actually. Um, it assumes that you've got race rear sets, which I obviously don't yeah. have because it's a road bike. And with race rear sets, you don't have any of the brake light mechanism. Exactly. Yeah. So the bracket that comes with a full race system for a race bike assumes that. And that was also... It needed some work around, didn't it? It needed quite a lot of customization yeah. to get it yeah. to, to work. And so we, I mean, we probably spent the best part of three full days, didn't we? Probably um, messing yeah, about. Just, just to make around. sure it's perfect. Because yeah. some of the points on the fairing, it was very close, wasn't it? And we yeah, obviously well, didn't... touching, didn't, really. Yeah, yeah, almost touching. So we had to yeah. put extra heat material in. Must say, a bit of a shout out to race fasteners actually who sorted us out yeah, with some of did. the specific bolts we needed yeah. so we had a bit of a mare but it's all good now it's yeah. all fitted as you can see there's no bracket coming from where the rear foot pegs would be it's actually all mounted under the bike and that's where it's a little bit different yeah. to, to the race system compared to the road system yeah. but the road system only has stainless steel headers doesn't it it wasn't full titanium so which this is, is a real we, shame isn't it exactly because that was a big driver i wanted full titanium to save the weight yeah. and uh, yeah the road going version only has stainless steel headers which this doesn't have this is all titanium yes. and the end result is much better but Obviously, we nearly killed ourselves fitting it. Yeah, we did. <laughs> well, we I nearly did. killed you and you nearly killed me. <laughs> <laughs> so just bear that in mind. If you want to go for the Spark system, you can make the full race system fit, you know, with the fairings, but it takes a little bit of a work. You around. need to be quite handy, don't you? You need to be quite handy. If yeah. not, just go for the road system with the stainless steel headers yeah. and the titanium end cap. That's the recommendation. Right, yeah. back to the video. Close. Nice. I still think you can do with a little bit of fuel out and a little bit of fuel in. A little bit more point. fuel out. A little bit more fuel in at the bottom or the top? Just a little bit out of there, 10 to 12. See that little dip there? And maybe a tiny bit at the top just to, to well, comp. It's a little bit rich now, is it, the 10? Just a little bit, yeah. yeah okay. So is the red the old one and the blue the new one? They're just two. I just I always try and do oh, back to back. Just ones, shows yeah. you that it was, they were both straight after each other. They're always a little bit uh, different. Okay. It, it, depending on bike temperature and so, stuff so like that. So take a little bit more out here and put a little, no, more, we're gonna no, take sorry, a little bit Put some in here and take, yeah, yeah with you. And then put a little bit of fuel in little there. Just bring that there. down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. is the plan. Well, the low stuff's good now. All the low stuff's really yeah. good. So you're happy with all that, yeah? No, as in the low throttle opening. Oh, this, right. is, this is just 100% there. So, yeah. oh, okay. so you've I've got checked all the, oh, so all the right. smaller stuff. So, so yeah. you've got yeah. all the yeah all the fine stuff out of the way. Yeah. Now you're just oh, looking gosh. at the, the 100%. It's the 100% there, which is your end of end of the figure, the glory figure. Yeah. The bragging rights of the pub figure. Yes. We don't care. We don't care. We're not into all that. Oh, no, I don't, I don't <laughs> really care, to be honest. It's all about rideability. I'm not going to ride at 100% on the road that much, to be honest. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you riding.
she runs a bit hot, doesn't she? It's like trying to get it under 80 is really tough, yeah. as in engine temperature. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty consistent, 181. Yeah. And I say, once we get the, uh, the high revs and speeds, that's where we that's want it to be. Now, then, yeah. yeah. That's pretty, uh, pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Yeah, 81 is pretty good as well. Yeah, it's pretty healthy. 81 new meters. What was that foot, foot pounds? pounds, foot yeah. pounds. It's a nice curve, isn't it? It's a nice smooth yeah. curve now. Yeah. Do you have the curve when we initially came this morning? The, the original, well, the yeah, original we'll curve. It. Yeah, when we turned Page up. Fine. Was that overlaying before and after? Yeah, so the reds before. Wow, there we go. So you got yeah. more power throughout the whole rev range then, mm. basically, isn't it? More torque, more power. More torque, more power, yeah. So originally it was what, 170 was that? I can't quite read it from there. 170, 97. I mean, it was 171, basically, yeah. 171. And then yeah, so give or take. Another 10 horsepower. Yeah. And you say Basically, it's, and it's conservative. Yeah. Throughout the this whole range. Yeah. Conservative, yeah. yeah. And that's throughout the whole rev range more or less as well, yeah. isn't it? It's basically yeah. 10 yeah. from 8 to 10 throughout the whole rev range. And Brilliant. Thank you. Pleasure. Happy. Very, very happy. So there we are, 180 horsepower at the back wheel. Some may be saying, hmm, that doesn't sound as much as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Well, we had a bit of a phone call on the way home, didn't we? From yeah. Paul. Yeah, we did. Well, there are two things. One, when we were there the whole day, Paul, the guy mapping it, kept telling us that it was quite a conservative um, dyno. And so he, he knows that it's probably about five more, I think, yeah, uh, horsepower. Like that, yeah. And then, as you say, on the way back, bizarrely, we're two hours into the way back, my phone rang and it was a Colchester number. And I was thinking, why are they phoning me? Have I left something there? Yeah, have I left a tripod? Um, yeah, I thought we'd left some uh, equipment there. And actually it was the day before, I don't know if you remember, but during the month of March, we had massive storms um, and it was horrendous storm, wasn't it? But this was the day before the storm and they'd recorded the lowest pressure they'd ever seen air pressure in Colchester that day, yeah. which obviously saps power. Yeah. And so he phoned me to basically say he and the manager there <laughs> had been discussing the results of the dyno, saying, Christ, we've never seen anything like this. So that was also a contributory yeah. factor. So, Whether it was the best day to get it mapped, to be honest, with those low pressures, yeah, probably not. Probably not, but you yeah. just weren't aware that that was what exactly. was coming, were so we? it was so, what it was. So, and again, it's not about bragging rights. I don't really care. The whole point of the map for me was never really about top end because there's so much top end anyway. It was just about getting rideability and that sort of snatchy throttle removed. And how is it now you've rode it? It's incredible. I mean, I thought it was fine standard, yeah. to be fair, because some bikes feel snatchy and the GSXR didn't to me. And I think Euro 5 is definitely better than Euro 4 from a snatchy out of the mm. factory yeah. throttle perspective. But having had it mapped, the first ride I had, I couldn't believe it. It's just like around town, just, you know, off a closed throttle. It's unbelievable. You know, if you just want to pick the throttle up in bends, it's, in my mind, it's yeah, perfect. It's yeah. really, really perfect. So I'm very pleased with the result. Yeah. Worth the effort. Definitely yeah. worth the effort. So if you want to get your bike mapped, highly recommend the guys at MSS Performance. Yeah. Also, they're the distributor of the Spark system. So if you yeah. if you if you want a Spark, if you want a full system for your bike, have a word with them about which one best suits your needs. You know, don't don't fall into the step we did by ordering the wrong one. So yeah. give them a ring, send them an email, have a chat with them. But uh, massive thanks to MSS Performance for having us for the day. Yeah. Great results. We're going to go out. Now I've got my GSXR, of course. We're going to go out for a bit of a ride. Yeah. The Gixxer boys are going to hit the road. We're going to do a bit of a vlog. We'll talk about why Greg went for the GSXR, yeah. because I know we were talking Tuonos and oh, definitely. Super Naked. Yeah, yeah. So, but you went for the GSXR. I we'll think people will think I'm mad, but I'll try and explain yeah, the logic. No, well, yeah, why we did that. And yeah. uh, we can have a bit of a, maybe even a comparison between my yeah. K8 and the new one as well. So uh, if that sounds of interest... Press that Mine's subscribe button. <laughs> well, we have to see. Let's wait until the uh, exhaustive examination of them. But if that sounds of interest, press the subscribe button and we will see you on the next video. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Let me famous, Benny. Oh, Ben. <laughs> <laughs>